Salt palmetto is very important. If you are a man and you are approaching 40, I would say that salt palmetto is an absolute necessary thing for you to take. Salt palmetto is our native. Did I bring one? Yeah, here we are. This is a silver form. It makes a very pretty small palm. It actually suckers from below. This one's starting to sucker. The foliage on this gets about this big around. This is what we call scrub palm. Scrub palmetto. When you see the, out in the scrubs, you see all these pineapple, all these palms growing. This is a native palm, Saranoa repens. And it's sold as salt palmetto. And it is an absolute specific on hyperplasia of the male prostate gland. And they, now some of the work being done at FIU by Brad Bennett, he feels that it might actually be um, very antagonistic to the precursor of prostate cancer. So you've got nothing but good. Plus the fact that it's a, a really good toner and everything else for the body. There's quite a bit of stuff down there on it. Um, it's used as a diuretic, it relieves urinary problems, it works against cystitis, catarrh, wasting diseases, and supposedly because of the endocrine action of it, it actually can increase breast size in women. Now nobody's interested in that, but if you were, there it does that too. It's a low palm to about eight feet, clumping, has an attractive silver form, like this one. This is called Ceresius, or I saw another name on the plant finder the other day, it's some, some other form. This is one of the most important pollinators we have in the wild. When this thing sets a bloom, it's a huge bloom, maybe four feet long, and it's got a million white flowers and about a quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch. And every bug in the world comes to these things. So you have, it's a tremendous pollinator feeder. It's one of the best butterfly plants you could put down. And then, in addition to that, the fruit that comes off of that is eaten by everything in the world. This is a major food of turkeys. Our wild turkeys, Florida's really famous for wild turkeys. Bear, all kinds of raccoons, mice, possum, the usual stuff. And uh, it's, it's a, extremely nutritious for them, as well as the fact that when you grind the whole berry up, it really works on prostate gland. And uh, the Germans found this out. Some German wandering around southeastern United States realized that pastures where the farmer was too poor to rogue out the salt palmetto in his pastures. His cows were healthier, gave better milk if it was a dairy. The calves were healthier, and they started to wonder why. So the German monographie did some really work on palmettos, and they found out that it was, it's absolutely an incredible thing for the body. So then it took the United States another 50 years you know, to argue it and fight it and everything else, but then it came around. And you really should take it. Now, you can raise your own um, plant probably four times bigger than this, which would take four years to do that. We'll put out that bloom, and you can buy bigger ones. And it puts out the, the fruit, and the fruit turns green, then brownish, and then black. When it's fully black, it's fully ripe. Do you remember, some of you are, you know, you're not kids anymore, you remember when your mother tortured you with castor oil? Mm -hmm. Remember that? They give you castor, she give you castor oil in, in the in the guise of doing something good for you when she really just wanted to get even for something you did? Well, castor oil, I can get a spoonful of castor oil in my mouth and it can almost go down before I throw up. Almost, it's, at, it's automatic. I will throw up, there's no way I can prevent it. Serenoa berries are five times faster than castor oil. I haven't met anybody yet who could keep one down. And Brad Bennett said it's impossible to eat the thing. Well, I had a friend who saved fruit for me, and she threw it in the trunk of her car. She got it, I guess it was April or something like that. She said, you want to have a big silver one whenever you want the fruit? I said, oh, absolutely. At that time, I wasn't thinking about it being a prostate thing. I wanted the seed to grow the plant. And uh, she threw it in the trunk of her car. Well, the next time we thought about that, it was like six or eight months later. Obviously, she never went in the trunk very much. And uh, she, I said something about you know, the, the palmettos are starting to get uh, flowers again. She says, oh, palmettos, oh my God! She grabs my arm, we were teaching it. You see, see, we run out in the, in the field, you know, in the, uh, the parking, and there she pops open her trunk, and here are these berries in there. Now, a lot of them been separated from the branches and whatever. So she says, you still want these things? It was kind of aromatic in there, but it wasn't too bad. <laughs> and uh, so I got the berries out, and my first impulse is, you know, I'm going to try one. I've tried them probably 10 times in my life. And every time it's, it's been, 
It, it, I know, there's no way. I tried this one, a little tiny bite, and it was sweet. And so I gingerly put the whole thing, and she's standing like this, because she knows what they taste like. And I actually ate two or three of them, and I wouldn't say that I walked across the street to get a handful of them, but I can see why the Indians considered them to be candy, because that was one of the few, probably, few really sweet things they had, and they probably dried them over fires, which might add another flavor to them. You know? So, you know, there's always, always another way.